Alrighty, y'all. Good morning. This is not my normal time that I go live. But, um, I'm doing some research. And I was going to actually write a blog about it. But then I was like, let me just do a video. Because sometimes when I'm doing research and it's so in-depth, it's just a lot that you're trying to get out to the masses. And what I have learned over the over the years of doing this is not everybody enjoys reading. So I found that when I put good information out there in the form of a video, more people get the knowledge because not everybody's going to stop to be able to read all of the stuff that I, I want to put in a blog. So, um... If you don't know who I am, I'm Sharonda Parker. I'm the owner of the PPG store. And basically what I do is I specialize in sexual health and wellness. Some people call PPG an adult toy store. I call PPG a sexual resource center because we give out a lot, a lot of information. Not only do we help people in the bedroom, but we also help women to feel more confident and, um, and to kind of boost a esteem when it comes down to the way they feel about themselves and in the bedroom. So I'm going to give everybody a chance to log on because I know that this is not the normal time that I go live. My live days are Mondays and Wednesdays. But because I had so much good information and I was excited to get it out to you all, I decided to do a live video so that you can like and share and send this information to people. And I am going to try my absolute best to keep this video as clean as possible, to not use any vulgar language because you know I will go there with my mouth. So um, I'm doing some research on, I'm doing a lot with sexual health and wellness right now, but I'm doing a lot of research on douching and women being self-conscious about the way their body smells and all of this kind of stuff. So, um, I decided to start doing some research on dushing. Okay. Because this is a practice that has, um, been going on well before my time, well before my grandparents, great grandparents. And a lot of times we wonder, you know, why, why do we do some of the things that we do and why do we feel like it's right? Because even though the doctor tells us not to do it, so many women still do it. Even though the doctor tells you how unhealthy it is for the vagina, so many men look down on women who choose not to dish. I have heard men say, my grandmother did it, my mama did it, but this woman here don't want to do it. If it worked for them and them and them, what makes her think it can't work for her? She just nasty. No. Okay. First of all, let me say this here. Dushing is something that um, people didn't dish for a fresh feeling. That's not why people started dushing. Okay. People started dushing because they felt like it was a form of birth control in the ancient times. That was the primary purpose for dushing. It had nothing to do with the way your vagina smelled. It had nothing to do with making it tight. It had nothing to do with anything other than to flush the vaginal canal of semen. Back in the ancient times, the primary occupation for women was prostitution. Most of the women, if they were not married, they were whores. And they would dish in between clients to clean the vaginal canal of one partner's semen before she dealt with the next partner. And then the STDs became so out of control during that time. A lot of people thought that dushing would help with the disease. So not only did they start uh, dushing with water, but they started incorporating other methods of dushing. Okay. They would dish with honey. They would dish with olive oil. And then years later, they started dishing with vinegar. Okay. Moving along, early um, 1900s, Lysol came out. Today, we use Lysol as a disinfectant to clean our homes, right? But the primary purpose of Lysol, when it was invented, 
was for dishing. And they would have all types of ads in the uh, papers about how the vagina isn't fresh. And they basically did a campaign on making women feel insecure about the way their body smell. Now, let me say this here. Women more than likely couldn't read during that time. So their husbands were the ones who would read the publications. So then you put it in this man's mind that she stank. She need Lysol. She needs to clean herself with Lysol. And you got to do this because your intimate areas don't smell right. What The only thing the women could do was go off of what their husband said because they were not educated. They couldn't read. And we all know that when it comes down to propaganda, propaganda is, you know, a form of advertisement and uh, making people believe what you want them to believe. If you see it enough, read it enough, hear it enough, you tend to start believing it. Okay? So, basically what happened was um, the men started making the women feel bad about the way their body smell and would actually start neglecting their wives in the bedroom if they didn't dush. And when I finish this live, I'm going to post up some uh, pictures of some of the earlier things that they used to dish with. Moving along, Coca-Cola comes out. <laughs> Coca-Cola not only was used as cough syrup, but then they decided that Coca-Cola was, was the better method to dish with because it had the fizz in it. And it can bubble up and fizz anything out, right? Now, not only are we dishing for freshness now, but we're also still dishing for birth control. Now, the, the Coca-Cola will kill the sperm. However, it will give the women all types of other problems like burns and blisters down there in their vaginal area. And even though they were burning and even though they had all of these issues going on, some women would still dush with Coca-Cola. Moving right on along. In the 1960s, that's when all of the different product lines of dishes came out. The Summer's Eves and all of this kind of stuff. And they basically rid it the Coca-Cola product and only made it for our uh, refreshments. And no longer used for cough syrup, no longer used for dishing. Coca-Cola is strictly used as a beverage now, okay? But you just got to understand the history of things. Summer's Eve comes out, and it was strictly about smelling fresh. Your vagina smelling like flowers. Your vagina smelling like uh, roses and, mm -hmm. and lilies and all of this kind of stuff, right? So then these men get this misconception that this is what the intimate area is supposed to smell like. But what happens is you have other things that start to increase, whereas women start to get all of these uh, vaginal, you know, there were diagnoses for it then, the, the bacteria vaginosis and um, just all of the, the yeast and all of the different things um, that can come along when you are disturbing your natural pH balance, okay? I remember when I had Gabby... My grandmother told me, she, well, she actually went to the store and bought the concentrated Lysol. <laughs> the yellow, the one with the yellow uh, label on it, the brown bottle. And when I had Gabby, she ran me some bath water and she said, sit in this and soak. And she had put the Lysol in the water. And I was like, this woman is losing her mind. But me being young, Feeling like she got to know better. I set my ass in the Lysol. Now, I'm not going to lie. I did not have any problems with the Lysol. It did not burn me. It did not irritate me. All it did was soothe me and soothe the pain from me just having a baby. That's all it did. It, it, I, but in my mind, I thought it was going to burn me up and all kind of stuff. But when I started doing this research and, um, and it was saying that Lysol was used for dushing, I was like, oh my God. But see, our grandparents, they don't tell us why they're doing certain things that they're doing. They they don't tell us um, all of these remedies and all of this kind of stuff. Like, we got to do the research for ourselves. Now, I healed up just fine. The cut healed up just fine. 
everything healed just fine, you know, with me soaking in that Lysol. But when I started reading all of this information, I was like, wow. You know, I didn't even know why she chose Lysol out of everything, you know, for me to soak in after childbirth. Um, I just think women have become so self-conscious of the way their natural body smells. I have women that are literally shutting down in the bedroom and not being intimate with their spouse because they don't like the way their body smells. They don't like their natural musk. When you are having sex and you start sweating, what you think going to happen? The room is going to start to smell like sex is in the air. Now, that should not be anything loud or offensive or anything like that. And some women's bodies are stronger than others, right? But the same way our body gives off these um, pheromones, you don't think that when you're being intimate with this man that his body is giving off natural pheromones? Yes, because he's sweating and he's uh, he's perspiring in all of his intimate areas as well. So he's sweating too. His body giving off an odor too. So I want people to stop overthinking sex. I want them to start just embracing each other and enjoying the moment. And stop worrying about what something look like. I have women that come in and they don't like the way... Oh, I don't like the way my vagina look. I don't like the way it look. Baby, everybody, you keep trying to compare yourself to a porn star. She then got all kind of stuff altered. All kind of stuff. They doing bleaching and all kind of stuff to make their areas all pretty and pink like that. But you are a natural woman. You're not investing in your body like that because you're not on camera. Come on now. Oh, shut my mouth up. Go sit down. Go sit down. I'm talking to my dog outside. Um, so all I'm saying is just learn to enjoy the moment, enjoy each other, and start having more of a mental connection so that when you get together, the physical connection, you know, it's not a problem with it. Okay? One second, child. Because I can't do I can't concentrate what I just said. Get back. Go. All right. So, any questions right now this morning? Who got questions for me? Because I, I do these videos because far too often women are coming into my store and it's so heartbreaking to me for a woman to tell me that I will not have sex with my husband because I don't like the way it, it, the room, I don't like the way my body smells. That's so unfortunate because if you keep denying your spouse sex, what do you think is going to happen? The Bible tells us that our body belongs to them and their body belongs to us. And we cannot neglect our spouses when it comes down to sex. So what is it that you need to do? Do you need to maybe because I'm, I'm just going to tell you about me. Like I'm a heavy woman. So a lot of times I, I feel more refreshed when I start my morning off with a shower. I feel more. I feel better when I get home in the evening and I lay down and just get in the tub and just soak and sit in the water. So a lot of times in the morning, I'm taking a shower. And a lot of times at night, I'm taking a bath. But at the end of the day, hygiene is extremely important. You can't go no two and three days without getting in the water and think you're not going to start smelling your own natural pheromones. That's crazy. You got to get in some water. You got to bathe on a regular basis. And then I know some men that have personally came and told me they enjoy the natural smell of their woman's pheromones so much that they will ask her to skip a day or two without bathing. Just because, just because they want the aroma to be louder. They want her natural pheromones to be loud. Yes, I have had men to come in and tell me they want you, they don't want you when you first get out the tub. They want you to walk around for a couple of hours and let your natural pheromones kick in. They don't want it fresh out the water. They want to be able to smell you. I've had men to tell me that they would rather deal with their wives when they come from working out. They want it sweaty. So I'm saying all of this to say everybody's preference is different. Okay. 
Let's see. My grandma always said being plus size, she would bathe with bleach, ammonia, Lysol periodically. She didn't do it daily, but she said she did. She did it here and there. Honestly, it's refreshing. Okay. So let me say this here. All of those things that, that your grandmother named, let me, people use what they had back then, right? I have heard of women putting a little cap full of water in men's bath water, men that work hard jobs, talking about the bleach. They put little capfuls of bleach in the water to open up the pores and to clean the skin and all of that kind of stuff. But a lot of those things, we used what we had back then, y'all. And those things were very harsh on our skin. You know, ammonia ain't nothing to play with. You ever smelt that? Like, ammonia is very strong. And... You know, like I said, my grandmother put Lysol in my water for me to soak in after I gave uh, birth to my baby. I didn't know any better. And I'm going to be honest, it was very refreshing and it did not burn me at all. But we want to try to stay away from those things because we know that the vagina is a self-cleaning or it's a self-cleansing organ. Um, we don't need to cleanse it. All we need to do is clean it with plain soap and water and then even be mindful with the soaps that you put up there. Let's see. Let's see. Girl, hell no. No, your ass got to hit some motherfucking water twice a day. What? I've, I have OCD. Oh, okay. So she was just basically saying she bathed on a regular basis um, because she have OCD or whatever. And y'all know in Louisiana, it's different here. We got real summertime heat and it's humid. And we have to get in water like we have to bathe. We have to stay on top of it because we can bathe right now and go right outside and we perspire just because of the elements in the air. Yep, I know. That's right. Ivory, ivory is a good soap. Yeah, for some people, some people like ivory. Some people like dove. Some people like dial. It doesn't matter. Just use what works for you. That's all I'm saying. Use what works for you. Um, a lot, like, I, I just really want to do this video because a lot of men, um, they have a tendency of not knowing about the woman's body, but want to tell the woman what to do with her body. Okay. And when a man come to you and he tell you about what you should be doing or what don't smell right or what don't, as long as you go into the doctor and you getting your annual visits and they telling you, you STD and STI free. You do what you, your doctor tells you to do. You don't need to do what your man tells you to do because guess what? He ain't about to let you tell him nothing to do with his dick. A lot of them don't even need to be having no more children, but let you tell them they need to go get a vasectomy. They'll tell you you a lie. They ain't about to go and do no damn vasectomy for you. So my point is they not about to go and do shit for you when it come down to their mail ports, but they expect you to do everything that they feel like you should be doing. I have had men to say that they done dated women and went in their bathrooms and opened the cabinet up and if they ain't see no dish there, they automatically felt like the woman was nasty. You can open up any cabinet up in here you're not going to find no dish. No. Mm -mm. Not doing it. I learned years ago and I trust what my doctors tell me. They are the professionals. My husband is not the professional. Which my husband was there when the doctor said this is not what should be happening. And he said that day, you don't need to do that anymore. Because she told you that that's not healthy. But we do things because we don't know because we haven't been educated. So that's all this video was about this morning. Y'all absolutely love. If you know me, I love history. I'm good at math. But... I love history. So I I do a lot, a lot of research with the history of sex and why we doing some of the things we doing. And I just found it real interesting to find out that women were dishing with honey and dishing with olive oil. And, you know, olive oil and even aloe vera are really good sources of natural lubricant. Um, if you got an aloe vera plant, you know, it's nothing wrong with taking the, um, the whatever you call it when you pop it and it's that slime. It's nothing wrong with taking it and putting it on the vulva. It basically helps, you know, keep it healed and keep it tight and right and all of that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of natural things out there that you can do. But that kind of concludes my video this morning. And I just want you all to like it and share, 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 
share so we can get this information out because I kept this video clean on purpose because I want you to share it because we got to get people informed.